Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I am Lance Kent Priones, and I am here to present to you guys our paper entitled Smart Squat, a near real-time computer vision smart assessor system for the high bar back squat. The proponents of this paper are Lance Priones, which is me, Bernard Choco, Lorenzo Lazam, and we are advised by the chair of the Department of Computer Science of the Ateneo de Naga University, Sir Adrian Leo Pajarillo. For the introduction and context, project context, there are issues when it comes to exercising, such that exercises are prone to improper form. Some exercises have a steep learning curve, meaning that they're hard to learn. Now, this is most especially true when it comes to compound movements or compound exercises in, in general. Exercises have a criteria to be considered correct, and that manual assessment through a coach is the most common means of assessment. The squat has actually a lot of variations, such as the front squat, you have the surgery squat, the goblet squat, but the term squat is simply an umbrella term that usually refers to the back squat. Now the back squat has two main types, the lower back squat and the main focus of the study, the high bar back squat. The execution of these two types of squat are different enough for them to be distinct from each other. This is due to the placement of the bar relative to the body, which sets out different initial conditions or rather different starting positions which then, which then ultimately creates very different types of motion upon execution. Assessing the hyper back squat can be automated, which also happens to be the essence of the study. The objectives of the study are to implement pre-trained models to detect and identify specific landmarks, which will be handled by MediaPipe's post-estimation model, to parse the squat based on standardized segments, to achieve this one, we have invented an algorithm that works with our post-estimation model that divides the squat into four specific segments. Also, to create a posture assessment model that includes a machine learning model as the assessor of the motion, in this case we have CNN, and a feedbacking mechanism via geometric heuristics. And finally, we are going to create uh, applications where all these things will operate on. In our case, we have created two applications, which we will be demonstrating later in this presentation. The literature attempts to automate the assessment of various exercises using a mixture of machine learning techniques. The common input method of the assessment happens to be an upload-only input, where users will record themselves doing the exercise, trim the video to the part where the subject is doing the motion, upload, and wait for feedback. This is one of the problems that we've solved by creating a system that would assess the squat in near real time or every after repetition without the need to record the exercise, but by simply capturing the subject. These are the common machine learning models and algorithms used in the literature. As for the theoretical framework, which also acts as the AI pipeline of the entire study, uh, the framework consists of three main modules the real-time estimation and segmentation module, which consists of the post-estimation and the squat segmentation sub-modules. Segments. Segments from this module will be passed on to the CNN module, which classifies each segment. Each segment, uh, or rather each incorrect segment, will be passed on to the squat standard module, where geometric, cal geometric calculations will be implemented to achieve a certain feedback. For the coaches, uh, we have Coach Gab De Vera of GDV Performance and Coach Dick Peo of DPSNC. Uh, Coach Gab and Coach Dick are two of the most well-known coaches uh, in Naga City. And the coaches are responsible for mainly labeling the data and providing the squat standard. Also, they help in facilitating uh, the data gathering process. We also follow the specific uh, or rather specific protocols for the entire data gathering process to ensure the quality of the data that we're trying to get out of the subjects. Now, for the real-time post-estimation and squat segmentation module, we've invented an algorithm to divide the squat into four specific segments. We call it squat segmentation. Squat segmentation works with MediaPipe's post-estimation model by using the X, Y, and Z coordinates of each landmark to identify and set the initial conditions to be used for the algorithm. We used squat segmentation as one of the methods for pre-processing the, pre the data, meaning that the algorithm works for videos. But we also invented the algorithm to cater to work in real time, 
coherent with MediaPipe's real-time estimation, hence the name real-time post estimation and squat segmentation. Now, the squat segmentation algorithm works on two main principles, the initial position of the subject and their displacement over time, rather the displacement over time of the landmarks of the subjects. Now, the algorithm works like this. We start by setting a timer to a chosen landmark, say the right shoulder with ID 11, and check if it's not moving for a certain amount of time, say 2 seconds. If a motion was detected, we continue to reset the timer. If no motion was detected, we then start the runtime recording and assign the first frame to top 1. Top 1 here is the first segment. Now, we monitor the progression of the y value of the right shoulder. Please take note that the values here are inverted. This is in accordance with the output values of the post estimation model that we used, that is MediaPipe's post, est post estimation, or I think Blaze Post, that's the name. We know that the subject is now going down, so we check for the y value of the right shoulder. If it's still increasing, the subject is still going down and we continue to monitor the landmark. If the value decreased, the person is already rising up, so we assign the previous frame to bot1. By definition, mid1 is the midpoint between top1 and bot1, so we get the mid frame of the recording and assign it to mid1. We then end the runtime recording and move on to finding the final segment that is top2. Now finding top 2 is essentially the final task here, so we continue to monitor the right shoulder. If the y value increased, this means that the subject failed the squat and is already descending, so we assign the previous frame to top 2 and terminate the whole process. If this isn't the case, we check if the y value of the current frame is equal to the y value of top 1. If it is not, then we continue to monitor the y value of the right shoulder. If it is, then we know that the person is already uh, done squatting or is completed when it comes to squatting so we assign the current frame to top 2 and terminate the whole process. Regardless of the situation, we ultimately expect the algorithm to give us four images that represent each of the segments that look similar to these four images in the screen. In the system, we used a convolutional neural network. The CNN acts as a multi-class classifier. The model receives images from the squat segmentation module as input. By the end of the study, the train accuracy is at around approximately 90% and the validation accuracy is at around 70% when predicting segments. Now we have classes here. We have eight classes. Classes are I top one, C top one, I mid one, C mid one, I bot one, C bot one, I top two, and C top two. To validate this model, we use k tenfold cross validation. These are the graphs of each fold from fold 0 to fold 5 and from fold 6 to fold 9. As we can see, the accuracy on scene data is at around 90% and the and around 70% on unseen data. So we expect its true accuracy bit between these two figures. The model has 8 classes. Each class represents the correct and incorrect version of each segment as seen in this slide. For the geometric heuristics and the entire feedback A module, the hyperback squat criterion will be translated into geometric heuristics. The standardization of the techniques will be done by the coaches. Also, frames from incorrect segments will be compared to the standard. Lastly, it sends out a feedback to move the gap landmarks closer to what the standard suggests. These things are called by the coaches as cues. For the basic operations, we have 3D slope calculation, which is essentially taking the rise overrun of the spatial coordinates x, y, and z with the deltas of x, y, and z in the equation. Also, we have 3D angle calculation, which is the inverse cosine of this equation. And lastly, we have 3D distance calculation, which is the distance equation of the deltas of x, y, and z. These three basic operations are used and compiled to calculate each of the following standards. We have knee caving, which compares the distance of the knees and the ankles. Flat feet, which checks for the slope of the toes and the heel. Head alignment, which checks for the slope of the nose and the ears. Torso angle. And depth, which checks for the angle of the hips, knees, and the ankles.
This is the bird's eye view of the entire system. It all starts with the real-time pose estimation and squat segmentation. After one repetition, this model gives us four segments which will then be passed on to the CNN. The CNN is responsible for assigning each segment to their corresponding class. All incorrect segments will then be passed on to the geometric heuristics for calculation. Finally, we expect a feedback from the system with specific instructions to improve the squatting motion. This is the part where we demonstrate the applications that we have created. As to what I've said earlier, we have created two applications, one for the mobile and one for the PC. In this demonstration, I am using a 2022 Xiaomi Redmi Note 11 Pro 5G with a Qualcomm Snapdragon 695 5G processor and an Android 11 operating system. The current demonstration doesn't have a multi-threading capability now. nor a GPU delegation. Please wait for evaluation. You have the correct posture. You may squat now. Please wait for evaluation. Avoid facing down. Instead, face forward. Avoid caving your knees. Point your knees outward. You may squat now. Please wait for evaluation. Avoid facing down. Instead, face forward. Bring your torso upright. In this demo, I am using the app version with GPU delegation. I'm using the same device here with an Adreno 619 GPU by Qualcomm. The previous app demo that we just saw takes us about 7 to 8 seconds to assess a single rep, while the GPU delegated app takes only 1.5 seconds. You may squat now. Please wait for evaluation. You have a correct posture. You may squat now. Please wait for evaluation. Avoid facing down. Instead, face forward. Bring your torso upright. You may squat now. Please wait for evaluation. Bring your torso upright. You may squat now. Please wait for evaluation. You have a correct posture. In here, I am using the app version with a multi-threading feature. Again, I am using the same device with a Qualcomm Snapdragon 695 octa-core CPU. In my case, practically speaking, I am getting the same result with GPU delegation, but technically, this one is faster by 0.1 to 0.2 seconds. So. Technically speaking, multi-threading wins here. Please wait for evaluation. Avoid facing down. Instead, face forward. Bring your torso upright. Avoid caving your knees. Instead, point your knees outward. You may squat now. Please wait for evaluation. Make sure your feet is flat on the floor. You may squat now. Please wait for evaluation. You have a correct posture. You may squat now. Please wait for evaluation. Make sure your feet is flat on the floor. Avoid facing down. Instead, face forward. Bring your torso upright. In this final mobile app demonstration, I am using the app version with both GPU delegation and multi-threading feature, although I am only utilizing four cores here. In this case, we're getting 1.8 to 1.9 seconds of processing time. So this one's a bit slower but still feels instant. You may squat now. Please wait for evaluation. You have a correct posture.
You may squat now. Please wait for evaluation. Avoid facing down. Instead, face forward. Bring your torso upright. You may squat now. Please wait for evaluation. Avoid facing down. Instead, face forward. Bring your torso upright. Avoid caving your knees. Instead, point your knees outward. You may squat now. Please wait for evaluation. You have a correct posture. The reason why we've created a PC application is because we want to demonstrate the ideal results that we want to get out of it. The problem with the mobile app is that its processing power is unable to cater for an instant result, and it uses MLKit's post estimation, which is a derivative of MediaPipe, and the CNN was exported because it needs to be exported to TF Lite which is an abstraction layer to begin with. In the PC's case, we're using all the original softwares that were intended with sufficient processing power. As we can see, we're getting more accurate results at an instant, just as planned. In conclusion, given enough computational power, the framework caters to a near real-time assessment. Not just that, we were also able to propose a system that collects input from just a camera sensor, which makes the whole thing purely computer vision based. So producing this system is cheap and is highly marketable. Also, CNN is a reliable model in assessing the squat with 70% accuracy on unseen data and 90% accuracy on seen data. In most cases, the algorithm, which is the real-time post-estimation and squat segmentation algorithm, is able to parse the squat regardless if the motion is correct or incorrect. And lastly, runtime is highly dependent on computational power. And that's it. That is Smart Squat. Thank you for watching.